Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for taking the time to register for today's webinar, Developing Strategy and Business Plans to Emerge Stronger. We're so grateful to work with BDO to deliver today's webinar, and it's my pleasure to introduce you to today's speakers, Shane Stafford, Director of Management Consulting, BDO Eaton Square, and Michael Cargan, Director in the Corporate Finance and Advisory Department, BDO Limerick. The guys have been so enthusiastic since we initially reached out to them with the hope of organizing today's webinar. So I'd like to say a special thank you to Michael and Shane for all the hard work and effort that has gone into preparing the content for, for today. And no doubt we'll all learn a lot from today's webinar. So before I hand you over to the capable hands of Shane and Michael, I just wanted to take a few notes on housekeeping. <clears throat> I know we're all working remotely at the moment today, so I've escaped into our offices here on O'Connell Street. But if I could ask you all to just pop into the chat a little hello and where you're all tuning in from for today to get us started. Throughout the session, you can also pop any questions you have in the chat feature and we'll compile them to address to both Shane and Michael at the end of today's session. You can also avail of the Q&A feature located in the toolbar at the bottom of your screens. And on a final note, the recording of today's session will be issued in the coming week. And we'll, we hope that you can share with your network. So without further ado, I'd like to hand you over to Shane. Okay. Hi, everybody. And uh, thanks for joining us today. Uh, myself and Michael are going to take you on a whistle stop journey through strategy and business plans. And the hope by the end of our time on this call is that you have an understanding of about how to approach it, but also some of the benefits that you can get from them. Um, and most importantly, some of the learnings that we've had from dealing with companies from multinational right through to single owner operators. And that's that's our purpose today. A small bit about myself, you can see some of our details on screen there. Um, so uh, my, my area of specialism is really around strategy and uh, strategy development and implementation, organizational design. So that's about making sure that your organization is structured, designed and has the culture that enables your strategy. And we also do a, an awful lot of work around change management and, and aligning the change that's being implemented uh, so they can be embedded in your organization. Uh, I work with clients that range from huge to very small. Uh, so we span private sector, public sector, uh, NGOs, and uh, the commercial semi-state organizations. So everybody from the likes of Airgrid and Bordish Gawara through to some uh, organizations like Diageo and Britvic and on into smaller uh, organizations. Uh, Michael. Yeah, um, yes, hi everyone. Um, yeah, and, and thanks Quiva for the introduction and for the Chamber to give us the opportunity as was to share our insights and both, as she mentioned, development strategy and, and business plan. So again, just by way of background for me, I'm a, I'm a director here in our corporate finance advisory team in the city in, yeah, on, in O'Connor Street. Um, so my work is quite diverse to, um, in, in that area. It's around I suppose range of working with clients and business plans and independent business reviews, um, also business valuations, um, and then business restructurings as well, which I suppose entails uh, passing businesses from one generation to the next. Um, I suppose trying to introduce kind of senior management team members into, into business as owners. I suppose also working with our clients in relation to helping them maybe achieve business sales to realize value or also um around acquisitions if they're if they're if they're trying to achieve growth uh, so quite diverse um and the workloads to degrees driven to an extent by the economic environment in which we're kind of operating in and this was that probably lends towards today in terms of business plans um and, and speaking it, it's it's really an area that we've seen a, a significant volume of extra uh requirements um and requests from our clients in in, in recent months um, so today um, I'm going to speak about business plans and kind of give you an understanding of maybe how we approach business plans and what's involved. Um, also, why do we see our clients doing them? And also just give our general experiences in terms of the do's and don'ts um, of, of completing business plans. So um, I think so firstly, Shane is going to maybe discuss the strategy part and afterwards I'll run through the, the business plan portion. Yeah. So, so we're going to Treat this almost so well, we can't have a proper conversation with it. We're treating it almost in a conversational style between myself and Michael today. Uh, and we're going to take you on the journey from strategy development, which it tends to in most businesses happen first, and it should always happen first. Uh, and then we bring you all the way through that into execution. And then we take you from e in execution mode, we bring you into business plans. And that's where Michael's going to really take you into the detail of what that's about. Um, and it's going to be it's going to be quick. Um, so if you have any questions, please feel free to pop them into the chat. Uh, Quiva is moderating those so that we can get them through. Uh, and we hopefully will answer most of the questions as we go through the journey anyway. Uh, 
So in terms of where we're going with, with our strategy, just gonna get my slide on. Um, so key thing about strategy is it is a moment in time that you should, as business leaders and business owners, take that moment to stop and think. In the sporting parlance, it's about putting your foot on the ball and then understanding what game you want to play in the future and how you're gonna structure it and how you can set yourself up. So you move yourself out of the tactical and reactive, which in particular in the last year, many of us have been in, and you move yourself into a, into the moment where you're going, okay, I'm gonna reflect on what I wanna do when, when we're moving through the next three, five years, and we're gonna be strategic and proactive about so planning. And this really is the role of a leader in an organization. It's about making sure you add value by setting direction and enabling your team. When we look into the reasons why people don't, um, we hear, we constantly hear all the excuses and, and let's be fair, we also use these excuses ourselves at times. And it's about, look, it's, the world is changing so much. I just don't have the time. I'm, I'm too busy. I'm running the business to be able to manage and lead the business. And that sort of conversation goes on. So what we're trying to say here today is, look, if, you, if you're running in a VUCA world, as, as it's known, so volatile, uncertain, complex, and, and ambiguity taking over everything, you can get lost in that world. However, there's ways to get yourself through it and get your teams through it. So if you're in a volatile situation, vision, a strong, compelling vision that al aligns your team and keeps you on track will really help deal with the volatility because as everything else is changing, you know what you want to achieve. In an uncertain world, you can, you can get rid of uncertainty with facts, data, facts, not feelings, not the emotions, not the I thinks, but actual facts. So analyze, review, evaluate, anticipate, and then plan. In, with the complexity, the way around complexity is driving clarity. Your vision will help you do that. So it's giving you a very clear direction about what you want to achieve, where you want to play, what options you want to play in, uh, and what you want for your long-term success rather than just your short-term uh, reaction to everything that's popping up. It also means that when things do pop up, you know whether it's in line with what you want to achieve or it's not. So you've already done some of the pre-thinking on it. Ambiguity. Look, we, we live in a world where black and white isn't that common. Um, the reality is we live in the gray for most of our for our lives and our business lives is typically in the gray however if you plan and you plan well you can adapt your plans so this is not about saying you write a strategy you forget about it that's it that's what we're doing you've got to do your plans you have your strategic plan in place and you adapt to what comes along and as the facts change and as you learn more facts the other big challenge is always time so if we think about time as being something we that you, you only have so much of it, which nobody wants to work 24 hours a day and then have to work extras on top of that nearly. But with the focus that having a clear strategy will give you will unlock time because you're not dealing with all these ad hoc queries that pop up and you have to try and make decisions on the fly on it. The strategy will keep you on track. So that's about stop making excuses. But if we if we start looking then into what, what is a strategy as we see it, the strategy that we see is one that is really about making sure that we filter the facts that we've got and then make decisions that's really what a strategy is it's about getting those facts that matter to your business in your context in this time period and making decisions about those and what you want to do when you're moving through it uh, in terms of the, the process i'm going to take you on it's a it's a whistle stop process tour we're going to give you obviously when we do this with our clients we get into an awful lot more detail and when we, we we share the detail of how we do it why we do it and the explicit learnings but uh, you know in a one-hour webinar that's not possible and um, it also wouldn't be overly sensible from a commercial point of view for me to give away all of the the secrets in one go and um, if we look at it this is this this journey you see here this very simple timeline of nine points there there's the key nine steps that we take people on what i'm going to do is just quickly drop into each one of those uh, and give you some learnings from each of those as we go through the a key thing I just want you to keep in mind um, is the little quote thing there at the bottom, which is strategy is a purposeful plan of action that helps an organization to achieve its mission, ambition, vision and goals. So you're trying to get your strategy document to a point where it's clear in your head about what you're trying to achieve and how you're going to achieve that. That's the purpose of this. And we'll keep that in our head all the way through the journey. When we, when we look to uh, start the process, we, we try to engage people's parts, not just their heads. You've got to get people's parts into this. So we, we set off on a journey that's um, you know brought to life here by, by a little girl getting all excited about what she wants to achieve. I was like, yes, this is where we're going to go. With it. This is the big ambition. It's unconstrained ambition. What do we want to do as an organization? Where do we want to get to? When we're big boys and girls, what do I want to be? It's like, do I want to be a fireman or do I want to be an astronaut? Well, if that's the sort of thing you want to do, if you want to be an astronaut, that's brilliant. Let's go for it. And we set that out and we go, look, and then you, look, it has to be obviously in line with your mission. It has to be about what you're capable of doing and your competencies um, or that you can acquire them. But it's, but it's that kind of big vision, uh, that big ambition, I should say, for the next potentially 15 to 25 years about what you're trying to achieve. 
From there, we have to obviously take a time bound constraint on that. So if you want to achieve something in 25 years, 30 years time, you've got to start somewhere and your starting point is where you are today. And that's then got to distill into a vision. Well, out of that 25 year ambition, well, what's the next three to five years? What are the steps I need to take to bring me closer to that ambition? How can I realize things in the near future that enable me to take the first initial steps towards that goal? And quite often then uh, we see clients who have had that ambition for a while and they're trying to get there. So they could be on year 10, 12 of their 25 year ambition. Uh, so you've got this destination, which is your ambition, and how am I going to get there? So you've got your different stops on the road, just like we would if we were driving from Limerick to Dublin or Limerick to Donegal. So it's about putting that pragmatic time constraint on it, onto that unfettered ambition from earlier on. In terms of learnings uh, in that sort of space, um, the, we constantly come up against organisations who are trying to short circuit that. And we constantly have the battle that says, oh, look, I, I kind of think I know what I want to do. And really what we say to people, and we see it time and time again, that the best results come when people do this properly. So set your ambition, be ambitious, be smart about your ambition, be really tangible about what that looks like and set it out vividly. And you set your vision then in conjunction with that, but you do it properly. Engage people, don't sit in a dark room. Don't sit in there on your own and go, oh, I think I'm gonna do this, this and this. Uh, and don't come up with just a marketing slogan. Engage people and engage people. Uh, widely not just the usual people in your organization you go to potentially if you've got a bigger organization talk to uh, representatives from the different areas about what the future might look like in their eyes and if you've got a smaller organization why not bring everybody into the room to talk about the ambition what we're trying to assess and achieve for the future that engagement is really important for the for the start because you're trying to engage people's hearts in what you want them to be able to deliver in the outer years and remember this isn't your strategy when you write it so when you say here's where i want to go that isn't a strategy that's that's your aspiration, that's your ambition, that's your vision for where you want to get to. A strategy is about how you get there. A lot of the time when you put detail in there, uh, and we suggest to people, as I said there, it's not a marketing slogan, you put the detail in, it's going to feel like you've got a plan. It's not a plan. It's not the detail. You've got to work all that one through. But after that, then you're into the, the kind of the fact finding and the understanding and well, what do all those facts mean for me? So deep analysis is needed. And, and what you're trying to do in here is make sure you understand the, uh, the uh, world you're operating in, the environment you're operating in, and what your clients and customers and suppliers and partners are all thinking about. You're trying to get into the detail of the facts, the data, and the research behind all of that. Um, and this is a great point where you can engage lots of people in your organization for input. All of that data and facts are all brilliant, but they're, it's out there and it's there for everyone to see. So what does it mean in your context, in your world, and in line with your vision and ambition? What, what is it that all of that data means? So you've got to drive the insights out. And that's about making meaning for us in this organization today based on all that facts. Uh, and and we, I keep stressing the facts here because what we're trying to do to you in this process is to say, all these facts, all of these things need to be there so that you can base it on realities, not on the fact that you think I have this, or I thought it was that, or I've, I'm really passionate about something. You need to bring it back into the realities of life that you're dealing with. And you've got to get rid of and challenge the orthodoxies and rules of thumb. So if you think your capacity in the plant is X, well, why is that? Well, it's because somebody said it. Well, actually, we're really sure that that's what it is, because that might be based on data technology, it might be data, data work practice, it might be based on something odd in the environment that's caused it, and it's, it's no longer true or valid. And we see that every single time we do a strategy. There's always this bias as well about already listening. So you're sitting there as a business leader and you're going, well, sure, I know all of this stuff, I know all of this stuff, I know all of this stuff. So you don't really hear. So you've got to address the bias uh, so uh, to get rid of that already listening, you need active listening. You need to be li sitting there listening for the opportunities and the weaknesses and threats, uh, because those things are, are, are existing in the, in the environment. And when you go into business plans, you need to be able to address those in your detailed business plans. And again, come back to the point about engaging. This is a key moment where you engage people. There is no point in magicking a strategy out of a dark cupboard uh, and tada, the tada moment at the end of it for people because they, they just don't buy in and then it just goes on a shelf. In terms of the next steps, then you're getting into, okay, now we've got, we've got our facts, we have our ambition and vision, so we've got our hearts engaged, we've got the realities of where we're living, and now we've got into the whole area of making decisions and writing your strategy. So the first step there is starting to make some strategic choices. So based on all of your insights, you've got lots of things you could do, 
And actually, what are the right things for you to do? And in some cases, you've got to make a decision between A and B, because you can only do A or B. So the apple and, and the donut here, really, like we all know that the apple is what we should all eat, but every now and again, we need a donut. Um, but you've got to make those choices and you've got to make the, the sensible choices for you, your business and the operation that you have. Um, the, the drafting and testing phase then is where, where you start writing your strategy and you start testing the reality, you start pushing the boundaries in this, you start testing it to see if it's going to bring you back towards your vision, which is in line with your ambition, make sure it is actually working. And you start getting into your financial modeling and, and the testing and, and the, the engagement with people. So this might be about if you've got a, a factory and you need some extra raw material coming in, is that possible? Can you source it? What's the pricing? You're getting into all of that sort of detail on it. And then the final step from my point of view is you start moving into the, the process of governance. So typically in a large organization, you've got a board. So the, the, the executive team will write the strategy with, with their colleagues. And then it goes from there into a board for approval. So CEO takes it to board, it gets a board approval. In smaller organizations, that may well be it goes to the uh, owners of the company. In other organizations, it may well be it needs to go to your partner in the business and you work it through and you govern. Whatever governance means for you, the sign off, and that's really important to get no matter what the size of your business is, because it's at that point that people are putting their name to it to say, I commit to delivering this. And that is so important. Don't just assume that people are signing up to it. Make them sign up to it. Uh, and then as soon as you've got the, the commitment for the organization to go for it, then engage and, and share it widely with people who are going to help you deliver it. So that's your teams in-house, but also potentially outside of the organization. Big learnings around this one, uh, this area are about you've got to make those hard choices. So don't fudge it. If you fudge it, you will fail in the future. You're only putting off the big decision making to a later day. And when you're putting it off to a later day, it's usually in a time, really seriously time constrained point. Uh, and at that point, you don't have the time to go through all the facts and the data that you have where you could have ruled it in or out uh, much earlier on. You need to keep it really detailed and you need to keep it hard. And by hard, I mean, you've got to put numbers and metrics around. So no point in having a vision that says we're going to be twice the size of what we are in the future because people will, everybody will interpret that in different ways. So some people will say that's twice the revenue, twice the profit, twice the cost, twice the staff, twice the size of physical space that we're operating in. You've got to be really clear about what we mean. You got to test it hard, so there's no point in going. Sure, I think it'll work. You got to be sure, and you got to go for it. Because when you commit through your governance to go for it, you need to go for it. Uh, and then the engagement. The, don't give this a token effort. Uh, this is not about sending it out as a simple email to the team. This is about really engaging people in the conversation about how this can now come to life. And that's really critical for the next phase because the next phase is about mobilization. You now have your strategy document. You're moving into a mobilization phase, which is where you take. The document that you have and you bring it to life up off of that page so how do you bring it into life well you start having a multi-annual plan so you have a very high level plan going well we have to do these things in a certain sequence so if you were building a house or you're building a new factory you'd have to have the planning permission as step one step two will be well you have to put in foundations and step three four and five and so you don't start with the roof is what i'm saying you start and work your way through it and that's going to be the same for any organization in a strategy where you're looking at it going out over a number of years and there's there's a line in here about activating a strategic pmo that's not needed in every case but when it is this is the time to do it and a pmo is a project management office a program management office you hear it referred to as well and that's where there's a number of projects happening in your organization and to keep sight and oversight on those you need to have one layer one small section of your business that, that actually looks at that on an ongoing basis keep everything aligned because typically with multiple projects going on, they cross over and back, they need shared resources, they need somebody to do the refereeing, and they need somebody to be sure that it's all running along on time to plan. In terms of the final step then, um, and this is often where the executive teams or leaders will have gone, well, it's done now, isn't it? Surely, no, no, this is now the moment when you, when you stop talking about it and you start doing it. Um, and quite often what we would say is, look, your mobilization phase and your execution phase will often run slightly in parallel. So you don't do mobilization and then do your execution. You'll start your mobilization and then start your initial plans and, and execution. So that's about just simply get on with it. Take those first steps. Uh, and that includes writing the business plans, which Michael's going to take you on to in a second. So learnings in this space, uh, really simple, really. Uh, you've got to make the hard choices. So when you're doing your mobilization, you've got to decide really ruthlessly what comes first? What are those priority projects you're going to do first or that you have to do first? And sometimes the pet project has to be put out to years three, four and five because it's not sensible to do it at the start. You might want to, might be your big desire, might be your big passion project, but you have to push it out. Um, again, the uh, you've got to do the governance on it. Make sure it's properly governed. That's what the PMO is about. 
you've got to engage people, keep them all fully engaged. So you'll have seen that as a big theme for me coming through this. Strategy doesn't get written in a cupboard, it gets written with a team. Uh, and too many leaders in organizations believe that they have to be the ones to write the strategy. You have to be the ones to lead the strategy. You need to be the ones to lead, coordinate, and engage your teams so that the strategy emerges from within, not just be delivered in by people like me as a consultant. And then you've got to link it to your reward and recognition. So no point in writing something down when you've got an organization and a culture that's potentially heading left, when your strategy and vision is heading right. You've got to align these things. So if you've got a sales team, for example, that are incentivized to sell widgets, when your future is in something else, then you're, you're in trouble. You've got to make sure your reward and recognition, and I stress the recognition piece here. So the recognition is not just about the financial gains, it's about the conversations, it's about the warmer, softer, um, and, and sometimes less tangible, but way more important aspects of this. All right. Okay, yeah, uh, thanks for that, uh, Shane. I, I suppose, so for the next number of slides, I suppose I'm maybe going to go through the business plan process and just kind of share an understanding of maybe how we approach business plans um, as, as, as I said earlier. So as kind of Shane outlined, I suppose developing um, an organization strategy is a journey. So there's a number of different stages in it um, that all need careful consideration, albeit depending on the characteristics of the business, different degrees of consideration. Uh, similarly, uh, a business plan, whilst it might just be one step in an overall business strategy, i.e. bringing your, your, uh, your strategy to fruition, uh, it also contains a number of different stages, uh, which all, all need to be worked through. So I suppose maybe the graphic on the screen or on the, on, on the side is quite apt in that regard that that's what a business plan is. It's like a jigsaw and it's about bringing your pieces together to be able to, to have your, your, uh, your ultimately have a clear picture at the end. Um, so, um, yeah, sorry. Okay, so um, the first step then is purpose. Okay, so um, this is a critical step. Um, it's critical, important from the outset um, that you're clear on your purpose and on the business plan. So similar again to Shane's slide earlier, for where he said stop and think on the strategy side on a business plan. Similarly, you, you do need to, as was well ask the questions at the outset. So why are you completing questions like why are you completing a business plan? You know, um, some businesses are clear on terms of why they're doing it, some not so clear. Um, again, who's your audience? Okay, there's a number of different parties, or there might be a number of different reasons why you're doing a uh, business plan. Like, are you doing it for internal stakeholders, for example? So, for uh, shareholders and or management team? And if so, what information do they need? Are you doing it for external uh, parties such as banks or government agencies or, or potential investors, etc. And if so, what information do they need? So, and also, like, what message or objective are you trying to get across in your business plan? So, like, again, an example might be if you're doing it for a funder or for a bank or whatever it might be, again, be clear in your message. What are you asking for? And how can, so in that case, how much are you asking for? What do you need it for? And demonstrate then the, cap the capacity the business has to pay it back. Okay. Also then, how are you going to complete a business plan? So what we often come across the question is, will it be done internally? Do we do it internally or do we engage external advisors um, to come and assist us uh, to do it? There's pros and cons to both, to be honest. I suppose um, the big benefit of doing it internally is, as Shane mentioned earlier, like we don't know, ex external parties will never know the business as detailed as the management team themselves or as, as, as the owner. Um, also, there's often perceived to be, I suppose, maybe a cost saving in terms of doing it in, internally. Um, however, my experience is, I suppose, the cost saving comes because if someone internally is going to put the time and effort into doing it. And oftenly, that time and effort is not properly costed. Like that person could be doing 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 something else, for example. Okay. Um, similarly, the or the, the advantages of possibly going external would be that you're getting the benefit of someone else's kind of experience. Um, also, there's no preconceived views um, in terms of maybe what the content or what the outcome of the business plan might be. Um, also, there is some, for example, there's some. Um, um, grant supports, for example, in place for uh, assisting businesses to offset the cost of business plans. For example, Enterprise Ireland have a have a sustain or have a business planning grant um, 
that they uh, to assist businesses in terms of offsetting the cost of external advisors for approved financial advisors, which BDO are on. So, um, so there is those external supports available too um, in, in the marketplace. So, in terms of purpose, what I'd say is be clear on your purpose at the at 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 the outset, and it's very important to keep tracking. As, as you go through the process, what your purpose is to make sure it make sure it's always aligned. Okay. Um, so the second thing is is ownership. Okay. So as the heading goes, it's your plan, so it needs to be owned by you. Okay. So again, for myself, Shane, we're talking about this earlier in the week. I give the, this example to Shane that that's uh, you know it, it it often occurs that maybe we we're working with a business in terms of developing a business plan and we're bringing it to a final stage or um, or they've given it out to external parties and they've come back with queries that, that I'd often get a call and say, oh, hi, Mike, uh, do you know your business plan? And I'm very quick to say, Bryce, it's not my business plan, it's your business plan, okay? You really, the, the business has to, take, has to take ownership of it because a good business plan is one that's not just for today or tomorrow. It's a roadmap for the future, okay? So it needs to be, like you don't want to just put it on a shelf and it gathers dust and that and, and, and that's 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 where it says you want to be a plan that can be constantly evolving and flexible and I can change and if someone in the organization doesn't own it or the organization itself doesn't own it well then it it, it, it won't come to life when either that individual or a much colleague or Shane Stafford step out okay so it needs to be it needs to be owned by the business um uh, so that's on the ownership um just then, the next one is, uh, I suppose, the objective. So, so, so be clear in terms of the requirements. So like what you want your report to be ultimately is an informative and concise report. So it needs to meet the objectives, okay, that you've considered in your, in your, in senior purpose. And the findings of the, of the report ultimately have to be have to be, you know, stand up to some scrutiny. So again, if it's if it's an internal management team or if it's a, if it's an external investor or a bank, etc., okay, they they the 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 content of it has to be has to be robust, okay, and um and again, the objective ultimately, as, as I said earlier in the report, is you want it that it can be updated and adjusted as time goes on, because we've all probably heard the phrase at the minute in the in the marketplace about businesses pivoting okay it's it's hit the phrase it widely used so again your business plan today might be you know your best foot forward might be clear what you're doing but there might be a you know a COVID or some other event that occurs that you might have to change your direction so you want your business plan to, to be to be to be flexible in that regard Mike if I can kick in for a second on that one the, the, a real big thing for me that we see over and over again and it comes back to any of the documentation and supports that go on around around strategies and business plans is people are not clear on the objective of a document, what they're trying to achieve. So they write yeah. it with a generic thing in mind, which is what you and I have been talking about many times. Uh, whereas if, if you know that the objective of this is to get funding from the bank or to get approval to take the next step in on a uh, like product development or something like that, you write with that real clarity of focus in mind because that's the objective you're trying to get to. So you, we started earlier on with a wider view, and now you're into a laser focus. Yeah, yeah, yeah ex 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 exactly. Like, like each element of your business plan has a purpose, and you're not just populating it for the sake of populating it. You know, there's a there's a there's a purpose to why you're doing it. And at the end of that section, you know, you're 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 clearer in terms of what your your objective is. Okay, so so you're so the person who's 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 going to read it or review it. Okay, goes through the paragraph. Okay, that that makes sense to me. It's not just a, you know, a standard entry that's done for the sake of doing it. So, so that's um, oh. that's the one. um. Just then, the next one is I suppose the structure. Okay, and and it's somewhat kind of related to what what you said, Shane. Is is like the on a structure, every case is different. Okay, it needs to be fit for purpose. Okay, so so as you go back to the earlier slide, so 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 what you're doing, the structure of your report has to meet the purpose that you want your report to achieve. So we again, it doesn't happen that often, but not unsurprisingly, we often get asked the question: Is there a template? Okay, is there a template that we can populate? Okay. And to be honest, you shouldn't be going this route because it should be bespoke specifically for your requirements. 
Okay. Um, so like there are, there, there is some elements of commonality across business plans. Okay. So there is some elements that have to be captured, whether it's your like examples would be your business background, you know, an overview of the marketplace in which you operate an overview of the management team, uh, details on your future strategy, a financial analysis, et cetera. Okay. But the detail varies significantly, again, depending on your purpose and your audience. So if you're pitching your business plan towards, again, if we, the, the, the example could be funding, okay, if it's going to land on an accountant's or a banker's desk, okay, they like the financial details. That's what they, that's what they want to see, okay? So the structure of it should give a lot of details in that regard. Similarly then, or, or the, the opposite to that is if, if it's towards an internal team, okay, Again, they understand the business, so you can get more detailed into specifics around internal um, in, in internal affairs in the organization. So again, structure fit for purpose, and it isn't isn't a, uh, um, a template that fits all scenarios. Um, so just then on the content, again, I suppose the kind of graphic kind of kind of speaks for itself. I suppose, I suppose on on the graphic part of what which is, is, is it has to be credible, okay? And it has to be robust, okay? It can't just be a kind of, uh, what I call maybe a dumping ground, okay? That like your business plan, as the same goes in apply way of putting it is, good data in, we get good, you should get good information out. If you put poor data in to a business plan, you'll invariably get poor information back out, okay? So, so be selective in terms of the content, okay? Put in good quality content into it, just don't, I suppose, try and fit other information that you might have for another purpose and say, oh, that'll fit well into, into, into my business plan, okay? So, um, so- I can come in on that as well, Mike. I, I think the other temptation is always to throw the kitchen sink at us, a bit like we would have all done in our exams when we weren't really sure what the answer was. Just throw everything down and hopefully you get a mark for it. it there's negative marking in these circumstances because people just don't read them through. It's just like, you, have, you haven't got clear sign of, you haven't got a clear line of thought and you've not got a clear sight to your future. So therefore, no, thanks, I'm out. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so in terms of the in, in terms of content, there's 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 two elements to the contents. Okay. There's the narrative piece and the, and the financial piece, which 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 I'll come to in a second. Okay. I suppose firstly, the narrative, this is your story, or this is the business story in words and pictures, graphics, charts, etc. Okay. Um, and I suppose what we find on the narrative side of the business plan is there's kind of there's probably two extremes. I suppose the first one is is that clients, you know, maybe the narrative doesn't come easy to them. They do know their business and they know their business very well, but it can be difficult for them to kind of translate, you know, the true value of their business onto paper. Okay. Um, and the second extreme is where we have the client who's, you know, feels they're back in their college days and they're writing a thesis and, um, you know, and they just throw everything into it, okay? Um, and again, you know, that they might have previously done some brochures or some marketing material, and now is their opportunity to regurgitate all that back up into, into the business plan again, okay? The challenge for us, I suppose, and, and the independent is to balance it up, okay? Is, is, is to say, well, where's the where is enough okay so you've got to give enough information that that gets your point across okay um but not too much information that dilutes your message okay so you don't want to cloud your message but you've got to get enough detail as well okay just one other thing on the narrative side and i'm, I'm probably sure you might see this somewhat in the strategy as well is that don't be afraid as well. Businesses are often very happy to talk about the positive aspects of their business, okay? So they're very good at talking about their strengths um, and their opportunities, but not so good at talking about their weaknesses and threats. So, you know, it's important that that's kind of captured in, in, the, in the narrative as well, because it, it takes from the credibility of your report if you're not dealing with those points, okay? Michael, when we talked about it before, you talked about the elephants in the room. And about, you know, everybody knows the elephants in the room. You've got to acknowledge it. If you don't, everything else you write and all your numbers and everything else are not credible because you're, you're ignoring something. And all you leave people with is a sense of, well, what else are you not telling me? Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. So, like, the elephant in the room, again, we were talking about this this other day, is, like, like he's there, so grasp it. So, you know, grab him by the trunk, bring him over and say, this is my elephant, okay? He's there, 
Okay, he's there, and this is how he's been managed. He's not going to knock over all the trees that I have, or he's, you know, trample down all the grass. Right, this is how he's been being managed. Because the truth is, every organization, no matter what size it is, right, has certain internal issues going on. Like yeah. example would be, like we said, Collison Brothers and 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 Stripe, very successful organization. But I guarantee you, there's certain aspects of their business that need management. Okay, there's certain aspects that they go, mm, that's a, that that's a threat to us, or that's a that's a concern. So, so don't be afraid to talk about those, okay, and to, and, and to allude to those in, in the report. It'll actually give great credibility to all the other information in, in the report as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, then on, on, the, on the financial side, okay, um, a couple of things on the financial side. The heavily detail on the financial side, again, is very dependent on your purpose, okay? So it all keeps coming back to your purpose, okay? If, if your purpose is, is some element of uh, fundraising or investment, okay, you need to be heavy on the financial side, okay? Um, whereas whereas if, it's, if it's more a tool for, you know, a roadmap for internal management going forward in terms of operations, this is what we're going to do operationally, wise, you know, you mightn't need to be as detailed on, 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 on the financial side. So that's the first kind of observation, okay? Um, the second big thing uh, is in terms of the financial side is it's got to be consistent with your narrative, okay? So if your narrative um, is, is painting a certain picture, okay, the financial side of your business plan has to, has to supplement it, okay, and has to, has to support that picture, okay? So, like, there's no point, for example, in your narrative saying that, you know, the business has done quite well and, and okay, we've had certain issues in, in relation to COVID, but it's managed and it's fairly static. And, but we've achieved, you know, some growth every year and we're confident that we can keep achieving that growth, but we don't need to change. We have a great management team in the business. We don't need any change in management team. We have all the equipment we need, so we don't need any extra equipment, okay? So that's all fine on the narrative side. But then if your financials, for example, is saying, well, actually, we're going to increase turnover by 20% next year. And all of a sudden, you know, your fight, it again, it takes from your report. Your financial is saying one thing, but your narrative is saying something completely different. So just make sure whatever picture you're trying to paint that it's consistent, okay? Um, the second thing on the financial side is that the, that the figures have to be credible, okay? Like it's an old saying, paper never refuse ink. Um, and we see that all the time and 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 also we've never seen a bad set at the same that there's never a bad set of projections i'm sure if there's any any bankers on the on the call they can probably relate to that um so like your figures have to be credible like if the business has always gone that way okay well then like uh, why are you going to say or, or it, it's going like that so like again, to just be just make sure that that if you are saying there's going to be a change in the financials, that you're clear in relation to why that's going to arise. Okay, and be clear around your assumptions underlining your financials as well. And that for me ties back into the conversation I had earlier. But in the strategy development, you've got to get the facts. You've got to get understand the market you're operating in and what you're going to do. Because if you're going to change the trajectory of your business by five, ten, twenty percent different than what you've had for the last ten years then you've got to be able to explain that with facts because if it's, well, I think you're dead in the water. Yeah, yeah. It just didn't work. Exactly, exactly. Like so so after you get this done, this, this graphic, Shane, Shane will have to take the credit for this. I'm not sure, I'm not sure which, which of my clients he was speaking to when he was trying to get a feel for their, their, their reaction. But um, I, I suppose the graphic, ultimately, what do, what do you want out of this, right? Or what are you trying to achieve? You're trying to achieve a compelling story. You're trying to say you you've, you have a clear purpose in your mind in terms of where you're trying to get to, and your business plan or your narrative clearly sets that out. Um, so again, to buy uh, into the book in kind of awe and amazement, I, I, I would like to say that's, a, that's, that's been my experience in terms of dealing with our clients, but but unfortunately, uh, unfortunately not, it's more probably shame, sh sh shock and amazement or shock and confusion or something might be, might be more appropriate. But, 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 but all jokes aside, like it does need to be a compelling story, right? It needs to be, I suppose, it, it, it needs to be 
your belief, but it also, but the recipient needs to believe in it as well. You know, if the recipient doesn't believe in it, you know, it won't achieve, it won't achieve the objective. So, so that's, that's, that's where you're trying to, trying to, trying to get to at the end. Um, yeah. A big unifying compelling story based on facts, based on data, all of it, bringing it together will create something that incites the action, which was your objective earlier on. So if that's to get people to invest, or if that's to get people to do something or to not do something or to change what they're investing in, that's the compelling story you want here. And it needs to be at that level that you see the boy here going like, this is just so easy to understand and so exciting. I want in. And don't forget, like these plans are also read by your teams. So getting your business aligned to the business plan and to the strategy is so important. If your team are not at this level of going, Jesus, I'm really up for this. You've probably got an uphill struggle for the next three, five years if you last that long. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, okay. okay. Um, so yeah, so just in terms of learnings um, on the business, what I say is is like constantly reflect on your on your purpose and outcome, and uh, maybe we are uh, emphasizing this point, but to make sure it meets your requirements. Okay, just just again, just constantly being going back to your purpose. What are you trying to achieve? You only get a single chance. Like again, if you're making a you know, a grant application, or you're trying to get, you know, management team buy in to a, to a project, or you're trying to attract outside investors, you only get one chance. So make sure, you know, that your business plan, like, clearly achieves your purpose. Okay. Um, the second one is review and update as clean your work in progress. So what I'd say is try and keep your business plan alive. Okay. That is not just for clear tomorrow. OK, um, and generally, sometimes what we do in business plans and around kind of financial models as well is we build trackers into them. So like in April 21, you're saying that this is what the business is going to do. OK, reflect on that, you know, in six months time or 12 months time and see where the differences have, have, have arose and why they have arose, both good and bad. So like, why have we done better than we projected we have? OK, can we build on that again next year? OK, or why have we done why, why we not met expectations, okay? So again, is to act as a kind of a roadmap for the business for the business going forward. The next one, just easy read with clear messages. Uh, guys, if it's not an easy read, okay, you know, people just won't give it the attention, okay? So it, 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 it needs to be clear. Um, manage optimism bias. Th this point is sometimes when, when, when you're in, uh, an enterprise you believe so strongly in it because you, you've committed so much time and effort to get it to where it is okay so you you've got a, and, and and sometimes you're over optimistic in terms of in, in terms of what can be achieved so you've just got to manage that okay um that like again your story is believable like be 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 somewhat conservative if a business has always done this 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 right the likelihood is that, that it might keep doing that. And, and, and if you think it's going to be significantly different, you need to just firm down of why you think it's going to be, it's going to be significantly different. Um, right. So we've taken you on a journey then very quickly through strategic process uh, to develop your strategy from very start. So I've taken you on the journey from the ambition, the longer term ambition being set, then you can strain that with a time bound you but hence the little uh, hourglass there to say look you got to you got to take it in a bit tighter for the period you're looking at but you've got to keep the eye on the future what is it you're really trying to achieve in the longer term and this is just a step on the way to that uh you to get into that level of detail then and be able to justify anything else you've got coming up you've got to get into the facts you got into the data into the analysis and you've really got to robustly test that do not come out of that with i think and i feel and i hope and i pray and I'm jesus with a good wind it'll be grand what you need to have is the facts. From those facts, you generate meaning, you generate insight, and that's meaning and insight for your business. So all of those facts in your context with all of your set of skills and all of your talents, uh, then what can you do with that? You bring that then into making your strategic choices. So what are those big things you're going to do? And yes, for those of you who have made hungry with the donut on a Friday, I'm sorry, um, but somebody should need, somebody in here needs to look at an apple. Then we have the draft and test. So you bring your model together, you bring it to life on the page, you start writing out what you're going to do and how it's going to work, what the implications of that positive in your revenues, negative in terms of your costs, and uh, then your people movements and everything else. All those numbers have to come together. It's not just the financial numbers, it's all of those KPIs as well you need to look at. And then you finalize, you bring it to the board for approval, you bring it to your governance committee for approval, and then you engage, and you engage big and fast. 
then once you've started engaging, you got to mobilize, you got to get those plans and those ambitions and hopes and prayers off the page and into a structure that will allow you to deliver it. And then lads, what you have to do is get on and do it. And it's, a, it's as simple as that in a whistle stop tour, really hard in the, in the, in the real world. And then my, yeah, the yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's, I, I, and it's something similar on the, on the, on the business bank, just a, a, again, a quick cap on these points. But again, your purpose at the start, be clear on your purpose. Be clear so as you know where, what you're trying to achieve from it and constantly revert back to your purpose to make sure you're still aligned. Ownership, you have to own it to, to, to bring it alive. It has to be owned by you. Okay, It can't be owned by, 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 by a third party. So take ownership of it. Um, it needs to, the objective, you need to be, the, the objective ultimately needs to deliver an impact. So it needs, it needs to be clear in terms of what your objective are and it needs to meet that objective. Okay, the structure again, it needs to be fit for purpose, you know, square peg round holes, like, you know, just make sure the structure, it's not a set standard. Okay, it's not like a set of accounts or it's not like a tax return or a contract. Or, or a sales contract or, or, or whatever that has a beginning, middle and end, right? It does have a beginning, middle and end, but that beginning, middle and end is dependent on your specific set of circumstances, okay? The content, again, the content has to be the right content, okay? It's not just about, you know, my business plan is five pages and Shane's is 10, Shane's 10 is better than my five. It's not about that, okay? It's about good quality content. Uh, the narrative, again, the narrative, make sure you have enough narrative, and sorry, make sure you have enough narrative, but not overdo it. Okay. And again, um, the and the similarly on the financial side, you know, you do need to have a level of financial detail included, where cash flows, PL projections, balance sheet projections, okay. And we're like as accountants, we're very happy to get big into the detail on financials, but just again. Be conscious of who you're doing the finances for and what information they need. Like if it's an investor, an investor wants to return on their money. If it's a, if it's a bank, a bank wants to see repayment capacity. So like it, it's be, 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 be careful in terms of financial level of detail, but the narrative and financials have to flow, they have to match. And at the end, then you should have a compelling story that that's, that's a good read for someone. So they understand it, they will buy into it. Um, and it's hopefully achieved, hopefully it's achieved the objective for you. Yeah. Um, so just then on the, I suppose, the learnings side, this is our final slide, you'll probably be glad to hear, but um, um, it just, I, I suppose, I mean, Shane, we're kind of coming from it and, and I suppose our environment of work, we deal with clients in different ways. Shane very much on the strategy side and me very much on the, on the kind of business plan financial side. So, um, but our learnings in those assignments are actually very similar, okay? A very similar point. So, um, so you know, I'll, I'll talk through the first few and Shane will do the last, but like I, I can, even on the business plan, I can relate to the ones towards the end and, I, and I'm sure Shane can do the same at the start, but like do it right, do the work, you know, I, again, I just need to be clear on your objective, um, um, and be sound on your assumptions, you know, just, just have, have, have sound assumptions. Um, again, right for uh, today's use, don't put it on the bookshelf, you, you know, like have it as, a, as an ongoing tool, like put it on the agenda. So like if you're having your, your monthly meetings, quarterly meetings, don't only dwell in it, but have it that people can reflect on. This is what it's aimed to be is a roadmap going forward. Um, invest the time, uh, like you're only going to do it once or you're not going to vary uh, portions of it. So, you know, put, put the good effort into it. Um, and what I say is, is, is get help. Like it's unlikely, as I said, it's unlikely that all capabilities you need are internally. They may well be, okay, but like the, the, the likelihood is there is a benefit for, for engaging people who have been through this process and understand what messages need to be get across and how best to get those messages across. And as I said, there is funding supports there, um, like Enterprise Ireland is, is the obvious one off the top of my head for certain businesses now granted, um, that'll like you, you have to fall into that, that, that criteria to qualify. But like there is, there is, there's been a huge, a range of government supports over the last number of months. Um, so again, investigate those supports and see how they can benefit the business. Um, and don't ignore the challenges or risks. So again, the elephant example, 
Like if you don't allude to those and you get asked questions, you're all you're automatically on the defensive. Okay. So be upfront, deal with those and and set out how you're how you're managing them because it will give credibility to, to the to the other information within the within the business plan. Yeah. And if we, if we look at engaging appropriately and broadly, that's about making sure that you engage within your organization and outside your organization. Do it broadly, get the inputs from people. It doesn't mean they're part of the decision. It just means that they're inputting, you're capturing those, those thoughts, those, uh, those extra ideas, those different views and lenses to look at things. Quite often in smaller businesses, we see that people try to solve it all themselves inside. And this is why Michael was talking about the getting the help. That doesn't necessarily mean you hire professional advisors. It just means you talk to somebody who's not the norm in your industry, not the norm in your business. Get different views on things. You got to make sure you challenge the beliefs. So we all have these beliefs that we live with every day. And, and quite frankly, they help us simplify our lives. But when it comes to strategy development, you've got to uh, think differently. You've got to challenge those beliefs. Like, is it always going to be the way it is? Or are there trends that are coming that are going to change the way life is for us? You've got to challenge those. You've got to make decisions. Please make decisions. Stop going, well, we'll think about that at the time. No, make your decisions early, make them clear and make them very, very in line with what your vision and ambition is so that you can keep your organization running to that heartbeat. It gets rid of all the confusion later on. It gets rid of all. all. You've got to revisit and review to keep it alive, as, as Micah said. Like putting it and having it like the dusty book there in the background, having it on the shelf doesn't help. If you're going to put in the effort and you're going to put in the time and, and everything in it, then that's great. But we do need to make sure that we have... Uh, a document that stays alive and it gets revisited. So just thinking to the future doesn't really help us. And if Mike had stopped playing with a slide, I'd be much better. <laughs> if we, if, if, if we really is if, moving us along, guys. <laughs> uh, then drive performance and management from drive your performance management from it back to the aligning your your objectives for your business with the objectives for your people and how rewarding that is is really important. And then the final final piece for me is about will you. For the love of God, make sure that your organization is scaled and designed and structured and culturally appropriate to make sure that the uh, future that you're trying to deliver can be delivered. And that's it from us. That was fantastic, guys. Thank you so much. Uh, for distinctly the average. An effort that went into that presentation and it's certainly given us all a lot to think about. I've been here at my little notebook and <laughs> taking notes. Um, and like you said, it's it's taken it off the shelf. A lot of us have a tendency to pop it on the shelf, gather dust. But I think in the, the, the year we've had anyway, the disruption has caused us to take it all off the shelf and really stop and think about it and create an ethos and a culture of it. And uh, of course, making friends with that elephant is, is the key learning from today. <laughs> Use the so, donut. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, especially before lunch on a Friday. <laughs> Thank you so much to everyone for joining us. Uh, as we said, we will be sharing a recording of today's webinar with everyone. And I see Wendy has just asked there if we get a copy of the slides. I'll ask the guys if we'd be sharing that in a piece of course, yeah. after yeah. this session today. So don't worry about that, Wendy. And we'll be issuing the recording in the coming week. So if you do have any questions like that, the guys' contacts are there. We'll also be sharing those after today's session as well. And if you do have any upcoming webinar topics that you want us to get involved in, please don't hesitate to reach out to us as well if you need any help with anything. So a final thank you so much to both Shane and Michael and to BDO for helping us organize such a wonderful webinar. And we're delighted to be able to host it with you guys. Thanks very much. Thank you, Thank you so much. If, if anybody has any questions, please do feel free to reach out to myself and Mike. Yeah. Our details are on screen, but you'll find us on LinkedIn as well. We're glad to have some extra LinkedIn contacts. Perfect. Thank you so much, guys. And to everyone, I hope you have a lovely Friday evening. Thank you. Take care. Thank Cheers. You. Bye now. Bye. Bye-bye.